Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about the 24 books that I ended up reading in April. Normally, I do mid-month wrap-ups because I do not want to talk about 24 books <laughs> right now. Like 24 books is a lot of books to talk about. Normally I do mid-month wrap-ups so that in the middle of the month I can wrap up all those books, which were hopefully half that I read. Um, but April was a bad month for me. <laughs> I had an episode with my chronic illness um, at the beginning of the month. And then right after that, I got sick. Uh, my doctors think with the flu and then Directly after that, I had another one of my chronic illness episodes and then I was in the hospital and which is a bunch of things going on. <laughs> I did not film almost anything in April. Almost everything that you watched was backlogged, like pre-uploaded footage from a month or so ago. So <laughs> I did not have time to film a mid-month wrap-up or I did not feel well enough to film a mid-month wrap-up. So um, some of these books do not have reviews because I had episodes while finishing them or reading them and my memory is shot during those times and my head hurts so bad that I don't feel like writing reviews. So that's what happened for some of these. So please bear with me. Understand that uh, I might have to fly through some of these books because I simply do not remember some of them, unfortunately. So the first book that I ended up reading in April was Fighting for Their Mate. Um, Interstellar Bride Program, book number 12 by Grace Goodwin. So this is another MFM romance in her series. This is about Chloe. She actually is the first human woman to from Earth to be matched in the Interstellar Bride Program to another human. So she gets matched to Seth, who's a human fighting in the alien coalition, like the alien army essentially. And he uh, names um, Dorian as his second. So like, he is also mates with her. Three of them get together while fighting dangerous space battles. <laughs> this is definitely my favorite book that takes place with Prill and Prime characters. So like there's kind of like sub categories in this series dealing with different alien species. So the Prill and Prime books are the books where there are mostly MFM pairings. And I also really loved reading about a woman who is fighting in the coalition, like the alien army. Um, I thought that was really fun. I gave this one a 3.5 out of five stars. Next, I ended up reading Bloody Heart by Sophie Lark. This is the fourth book in the Brutal Birthright series, which is a mafia romance series. I loved this one. I loved it. Okay, so this one's about Dante and Simone, um, who had a very interesting first meeting. Dante ends up stealing a car and Simone just so happens to be in the back of the car. And so that's how they meet, is like he steals her family car. And yeah, that's their first meeting. And from that moment on, they're very intrigued by the other person and they can't stop thinking about each other. So they fall in love, it's like their first epic love, but then something happens to the two of them that drives them away. They have not seen each other in nine years. And by some means they have to come back together and they realize that they have never stopped loving the other person. This second chance romance was done incredibly well. I adore second chance romances that are done well. This one is one of the best ones I've read. I of course didn't like all the secret keeping and everything because there is a secret baby in here. Um, and so I didn't like necessarily like that, but the author kind of had like to keep the story going, you know, and that's how she kept it going. <laughs> but I really think that Dante and Simone's love story is truly epic and a great con contribution to this series specifically. For trigger warnings in here, you have family member with a terminal illness, kidnapping, guns, blood, death, fire, and obviously the mafia because it's a mafia romance. Um, tropes in here, you have accidental baby, Big city romance, it takes place in Chicago. Um, different social classes. Simone is of a higher class than Dante and that's one of the reasons why her parents didn't necessarily proof of them being together when they were younger. It's a forbidden romance, it's on Kindle Unlimited. It's a mafia romance. There is a meet cute, obviously him stealing the car that she is and is a meet cute. Um, it's a second chance romance, there's a secret baby and there is a big time jump in the book. I love this one. I ended up giving it a five out of five stars. Ruby Dixon's Orc book came out in <laughs> April. So you best believe I picked it up immediately. This is the Half Orcs Maiden Bride by Ruby Dixon. This book takes place in the Aspect and Anchor world, like the fantasy series that Ruby Dixon has written, but you do not need to read the other books. Literally zero correlation. It just takes place in the same world. So like none of the other characters, nothing like that pop up. So you don't have to read those books to love this one. But the marriage customs that are in this book 
are also in one of my favorite Ruby Dixon books ever, which is The King's Spinster Bride. So I do recommend reading The King's Spinster Bride just because like it's amazing. <laughs> but anyways, this one is really cute. Um, this is Ruby Dixon's first orc romance and I hope it is not her last because it was done so well. This is about Lady Yolanthe. That's how you pronounce her name, Yolanthe. Her father tells her that she has finally found a husband for her. She's the only daughter in this family who is not married off yet. She is plus size and very tall. Uh, she thinks men do not desire her, even though all she wants in life is a husband and to be a good wife. She's just like accepted the fact that she's probably gonna be a spinster for the rest of her life because men claim to not be attracted to her. She kind of sees herself, unfortunately, as a failure to her father because all of her other sisters are married off having babies and are little petite women and she's not. Um, and so she's very shocked when her father's like, okay, I found you a husband, let's go to him. But uh, she's really shocked when she meets her future husband husband and she realizes that he is an orc <laughs> but man he is the sweetest bean ever he is so cute and sweet i think like the author's note ruby dixon was like i tried to write an orc romance with like a gruff orc hero but i just couldn't like i couldn't do it so he's a softy cinnamon roll bean and so it's so stinking cute I loved it. I loved Yolanthe. Like I loved her and like her character in general because you don't see a lot of women like that in romance books because authors don't write a lot of women like that. And I, I hate that. I want to read about more diverse women. Um, so I loved Yolanthe. And <laughs> just because she is less feminine looking like on the outside doesn't mean that she isn't feminine on the inside, you know? Like she loves all the girly things, even though on the outside you wouldn't assume that she's a girly girl. She is a girly girl and I thought it was so cute. Agacor, I think that's how you say his name. Agacor was just so sweet, especially to Yolanthe and will li would literally do anything for her. He worships the ground that she walks on, honestly. Tropes in here, you have arranged marriage, Sim and Roll Hero. It's a fantasy romance. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There are monsters, it's an orc romance. She's a spinster, a sweet hero, a tall heroine, and um, there's a wedding in here. So like they go through some marriage uh, rituals too, like in the King's Spinster Bride, which I loved. <laughs> Next type, Captured by a Prince by Emma Castle. This was blah. This was like a short novella that if it was a full length book would be flippin' amazing, but it is not. Also the summary says that this is like an MMF romance. It is not, it's an MFM. There's a difference. The guys do not get together in this. So I was I was pretty let down because if it's marketed as an MMF, it should be an MMF. Instead it was an MFM. This was like a second chance romance where like our hero is like the crown prince of this country and um, he's trying to find his childhood best friend and marry her. That's it. It's like literally 30 pages or less gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. I'm thinking I'm gonna change it to a 2, honestly. I read another Interstellar Bride program. This is the fourth book in the sub-series The Colony, so kind of like these cyborg creatures. So this one's called Her Cyborg Beast. Um, this one's about CJ and Rezzer. Both are very reluctant to have a mate, but go through the Interstellar Bride program out of necessity. CJ needs to get out of jail and Rezzer needs to get his beast form back. So he's one of those um, aliens that can go into like beast mode. So he essentially like, looks like the Hulk and you can get into beast mode because of mating fee and if you don't find your mate, you could be put to death because you could be a danger to society. So he's in the end of Star Brad program because he needs to find his mate so he doesn't die. Um, so they're both in a sh so they're both shocked when they start to fall in love with their matched mates. Like they never expected to fall in love with them. They just needed a matched mate out of necessity, but they fell in love with each other. Um, this one is super fun, and there's a lot of like action going on in this one, which was unique. Trigger warnings in here. There's a kidnapping and discussion of forced abortion so please be aware and tropes in here you have alien romance alpha heroes and pregnancy i gave this one a four and five stars i then read in the darkest midnight by grace draven this is book 2.5 in the wraith king series so like the same series that radiance is in like i think it just takes place in the same world like like i hear about in the like i read about in the book like some of the same places that ildico and brushen go to and all that stuff it takes place after i don't want in the series um which is back there so book two this one centers around hana and the talented swordsman her father hired to train her brother named radamar and um hana has been ostracized by the court and high society due to a giant purple birthmark on one side of her face um and people bully her a lot for it radamar is the first person except for her family who accepts her fully who she for who she is on the inside and the outside um and he makes her feel cherished <laughs> it was so cute 
Um, and each chapter has a little bit of a time jump. It takes many years for the two of them to get together, but once they do, the dam finally breaks and sparks fly between the two. Like at the beginning, this book starts out with her being like 14 or something, and he's like at least like seven years older than her, I wanna say. I'm like, ooh, how is this gonna work out? She's pretty young, what is going on? And like, it makes sense because like, there's no romance between the two of them until she's way older. So um, like, it starts out with them just being friends and like getting to know one another because Radamar is like now part of their family because he's training her brother. And she also like gets involved in the training sessions too. Like she trains with a sword and stuff. And that was really fun. I honestly wish that this was a full length novel. Like I didn't enjoy love, like I didn't love all the time jumps that happen in each chapter. Like I wish it, could have been longer. All the relationships were amazing to me. I loved Hana and Radamar, the romance like between the two of them, Hana and her family and Radamar's relationship with her family too. I thought everything was amazing. Um, tropes in here, you have different social classes. It's a fantasy romance and there are time jumps in here. I ended up giving this book a four out of five stars. I then read another Interstellar Bride book. <laughs> I read His Virgin Princess. Um, this is the third book in the sub-series called The Virgins. This is a fate made romance between Danielle and Gage. Basically someone's out to kill Gage and they're trying to figure out who it is. Um, this was just okay for me. It's not my favorite in the series. There's a trick warning in here for kidnapping. I gave this book a three out of five stars. I honestly remember nothing from it. I then read Seducing My Guardian by Katie Robert. This is the fourth book in the A Touch of Taboo series by her. So this is their forbidden romance between Hazel and Devin. Devin became Hazel's guardian when she was 16 and her parents died. I think he was like her father's friend or something like that. And right when she's placed as his ward, he ships her off to boarding school. Um, so this is years later and Hazel is about to turn 25. For her birthday this year, she plans on seducing the guardian. She has always been lusting after. So that's what this book starts out doing. She's at a bar and she knows that he comes to her on her birthdays. And so she plans on seducing him on her birthday. This one was just okay for me. I didn't really see anything beyond their like physical connection. I did not see the love that they've harbored for each other for years, honestly. Um, and I personally need more than just a physical connection and like full length romance books. I can get it in fun novellas, but like a full length book, I need more. So that's what happened in here. I ended up giving this book a three out of five stars. The next interstellar bride book that I read is Her Rogue Mates, which is book 13 in the series. Um, this is the romance between Harper and the aliens Styx and Blade on the planet called Rogue Five. This is one of the books that I read during my first chronic illness flare up this month and so I don't remember pretty much anything honestly that's what I'm going to leave you with I ended up giving it four stars I unfortunately just don't remember anything like during my chronic illness flare-ups I have a lot of memory loss and so literally don't remember anything from this I decided to pick up Love Wrecked by Karina Halley I've loved Karina Halley in the past so I thought I would pick up one of her audiobooks that's available through my Libby. This is a grumpy sunshine romance between Daisy and Ty. The two of them are stuck in a boat with Daisy's sister and her new husband after their wedding for a few days on the way to Fiji. But on the way there, their ship wrecks and they're forced to survive on this small island together. Um, this is honestly just okay for me. Daisy was not my favorite character. Did not like her. She was very self-absorbed and I don't like reading about those types of characters. The only character that I think I really liked was Ty, the hero in the story. And it was sadly mediocre when compared to her other books that I've read, like Karina Halley's books. Like I've read some amazing books by her. So this was just like mediocre compared to those ones, unfortunately. But that really stinks because like I love survival romances. This one unfortunately just was not it for me. I ended up giving it a three out of five stars. I then got into the monster romance mood because like, why not? So I'm trying to read all of Lila Faye's backlist because I've been loving her books. <laughs> so I decided to pick up Jack, which I know is a Halloween romance, but I don't care. It's not Halloween, but that's okay. This was another book I read during a chronic illness flare up. And so this was a short monster romance novella centered around a witch named Susie and Jack the pumpkin demon she accidentally summoned. And I thought this was really funny at times. So um, I ended up just giving it a three stars. I think it's like 50 pages long. If you just want something hilarious to read, this book is just hilarious at times because there's like funny monstery stuff going on. I then read The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. Now I'm not gonna be going in depth on any of the Bridgerton books because I am going to be coming out with a Bridgerton dedicated vlog where I'm going to be vlogging every single Bridgerton book, my live reactions while reading them. So this is the first book in the Bridgerton series. Um, I'm just going to mention that I read it. We're going to move on. <laughs> Hi guys, it's editing me. 
I forgot to mention for some reason, like I completely forgot to talk about a book that I read. Um, it was a reread, so maybe that's why. Um, but I reread Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass for the SJM along that Jen from the Book Refuge um put on. I of course gave this five stars. This is a reread for me for this series. It's a fantasy romance series. The beginning of the series is like YA, and as Sarah J. Mass's writing grows, so does her adult content. So I would say like the later half of the series is more adult or new adult um, age range. Um, but yeah, this book is about Selena Sardothian becoming the king's champion in order to get out of um, a slave camp. And she ends up bonding with the prince and his best friend who is like the leader of the guard at the palace and all that stuff. And yeah, she's just a, um, a bad A heroine who um, I love to read about and I love seeing her grow throughout the rest of the series. So I can't wait to reread it. You were also supposed to read um, a certain story in the Assassin's Blade alongside this, but that's not my reading order. That's not how I read those books because <laughs> I read books one through three and then I read the Assassin's Blade like that's the reading order in my brain and so I cannot read the novellas out of order <laughs> for the life of me I cannot so that's when I'll be reading the Assassin's Blade if that makes sense um because that's the way I've always read it and that's the concrete reading order in my brain <laughs> also crown of midnight uh you're supposed to read it towards the end of April too I did not read it because I was in the hospital so Let's leave it at that. I'll be hopefully reading Crown of Midnight um, later and then going back to watch the uh, live show that uh, Jen put on for this book. So I'm very grateful that Jen put together this uh, readathon because I've been wanting to reread the Throne of Glass series. So um, yeah, I'm excited to read more of the books in later months. Then I got into like this mood of um, wanting to read like rejected mate books but the thing is i only wanted to read rejected mate books where the hero of the romance story rejects the heroine and then he grovels like that's what i want like that's a rejected mate story a rejected mate story is not where a guy rejects a woman because they're mates and then she gets with another guy that is not a rejected mate story okay okay um <laughs> i read a few of those like back in the day when i was really into fan fiction um, like fanfiction.net and everything, <laughs> when that was still a thing. I found this book for free. It's called Eden by Darcy Rose. I've read a Darcy Rose book before, so I was like, okay, I'll check it out. And it's essentially about this woman named Eden, and she gets rejected by her mate, Paxton. Um, Eden is half human and has been bullied by her whole pack her whole life, and she's also an orphan. Um, Paxton is the alpha son who has been nothing but cruel and mean and one of the bullies to Eden. Um, and soon they realize that their mates but Paxton publicly rejects her and so she runs away. It was just okay. I was really frustrated um, and put off by the author writing the series as four separate books. This book, it's literally like 50 pages or less. And so she makes it into four books. And so the first book was free. You have to purchase all the other ones. You're obviously trying to get money out of people by doing that. Like you can put it into one book. Makes no sense. Trigger warning in here is a uh, parent death abusive slash controlling adoptive parents, child neglect and drugging. I was weak and I was like, man, I gotta know what happens next. Even though I didn't like this book all that much, I gave it three stars. I was like, I gotta know what happens. So I read book two, I bought, I bought, I rarely buy eBooks. It's like $2, $3. I bought Mate by Darcy Rose, which is the second book in the series, which is basically just a continuation to that story. And I wish I did not buy this. I totally wish I did not buy this. <laughs> There's no review on here because I didn't write one because I didn't like this. Yeah, it's just a continuation to book one. Again, I hate how she put all these books as separate books instead of just putting it as one book. It'd be a 200 page book. That's short. So why make it into four separate books? Pisses me off when authors do that. Anyway, it's like a continuation. He tries to get with her, grovel, whatever. He does a poor job of groveling, not good at all decided not to continue with the rest of the series. <laughs> then I have another monster romance. This one is The Widow and the Wolf. Now the wolf on this cover freaks me the heck out. I can't look at it. I can't look at this cover because it does. Okay, so this is a very short monster romance novella. Um, and so this is about Millie. She's a widow who is trying really hard to work as hard as possible at work in order to pay her bills. Um, little does she know that her monster boss, like monsters are like in society now, um, like everyone knows that monsters exist and so they walk 
along other people in society. And so her monster boss, her boss is a monster named Benjamin, has been keeping an eye on her and has been lusting after her for quite a long time. This was just a fun 30 page novella. I love the world and like how the monsters and humans kind of like live together, even though like they're both kind of scared of each other. And I love how the two of them were like pining over each other because she has been pining over Benjamin too. However, I do feel like the book would be amazing amazing if it was a full-length novel like it would be so good and so the tropes in here we have kindle unlimited monsters oh, it's a workplace romance it's a novella and uh there's a widow in here too i ended up giving this book a four out of five stars then i wanted to finish up the big boy series by cassie mint um, and the last one I had to read was Big Brain. This one centered around Professor Cameron Monroe and one of his college students named Angie. They have both been pining over each other for quite a long time and the DM finally breaks when he invites her to go on a like trip to Scotland with him and this TV show that he's filming to be like an intern for him. Um, and so yeah, this was really fun. It's not my favorite in this series, unfortunately. So I ended up just giving this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The tropes in here, um, there's an age gap, bigger hero, it's on Kindle Unlimited, it's a novella, and it's a student teacher romance too. I was in the monster romance mood as I was in the later half of April. And so um, I found this book on KU. It's called Rescued by the Orc Chieftain by Celeste King. I read an orc romance earlier this month, that Ruby Dixon one. So I was like, okay, perfect. Let's pick up an orc romance. So this is the romance between Yurish and Camille. Yurish is cursed with this kind of like war madness and um, is in danger of attacking his own people when he starts fighting, like he goes into this crazed state. Um, but then he comes across a human woman in the woods while he's in the state who was able to calm him down, which has never happened before. He then decides that she must be his and kidnaps her and basically takes her to his village. <laughs> he tries to convince Camille to stay with him so she can keep his madness at bay. Um, this was just okay for me. I feel like everything was a little rushed, especially the end. Also, there was like a side character. Celeste has a sister who she says is like a sickly girl. Like she's sick with something. Like I, she might have a chronic illness or something like that. And that's like never described whatsoever, like what is going on with her sister. Like her sister does not act sick the entire time she's in the book. Like there's like, she's not sick. And like her sickness is only mentioned at the beginning. Like, oh, I have to take care of my sister, she's sick. But how is she sick? Literally, you've shown enough, like the author has shown nothing, written nothing to indicate that this girl is sick at all. Um, So that really peeved me just as someone who is chronically ill, like, if you're gonna talk about someone being chronically ill and have that representation in your book, I would like more. <laughs> Trips in here, it's a monster romance, it's orcs, it's on Kindle Unlimited. I ended up giving this one just three stars. I then ended up picking up Rib's Sanctuary by A.G. Wild, the first book in the Rib's Sanctuary series by her. I have read a few A.G. Wild books and loved them. She's becoming one of my new favorite alien romance authors. I have been loving her books. And this one was no different. So this is about Lauren. She was abducted from Earth a year ago and has been recently bought by a new alien owner. However, said alien realizes that he made a mistake in purchasing Lauren and is not allowed to return her. So what does he do? He leaves her on the doorstep of an alien animal sanctuary. Um, the owner of the sanctuary, Riv, is not happy about this at all and has no idea what to do with a human woman. But then uh, this damaged hero uh, might learn to love this chatterbox of a woman the more he gets to know her. So it's kind of like the um, chatterbox and broody silent type uh, dichotomy here. <laughs> um, this is really cute. I love alien romances that deal with farms and animals. That happens a lot in alien romances. And I, I'm a sucker for them. They're so cute and wholesome to me. Um, and this one was just so much fun. I love all the alien uh, animal species and how Riv cares for all these animals and loves them. Like you said, this broody, grumpy hero loving all these animals he's taking care of care of. I cannot wait to read the rest of the books in this series. It was so fun. I really liked the audio. I got the audiobook through um, my Libby. So yeah, uh, I'm anxiously waiting for book two to come in. The trigger warnings in here is there's slavery, kidnapping, death, and previous sexual assault mentioned as well. Um, tropes in here, alien romance, uh, books with pets, damaged hero, it's on Kindle Unlimited. There's a language barrier in here. You know, I'm a sucker for those. So there's a language barrier between the two of them at the beginning. Um, a nightmare savior. So someone has a nightmare and the other person rescues them from that nightmare and like comforts them afterwards. Um, and a reluctant to love hero too. I ended up giving this one a four out of five stars. I then picked up Not My Type by Evie Mitchell. This is her first book in the All Access series. 
Um, I just love this cover. Can we like take a moment to appreciate this beautiful cover? Like it is everything. I love it. So this is about Frankie and she is the host of an up and coming, very popular podcast called the All Access Podcast. Um, she's a wheelchair user who loves to talk about inclusivity in relationships. Um, one of her viewers asks her about some advice about bondage and accessibility. But Frankie realizes that she's not knowledgeable enough to give advice on this topic. So then she seeks out a professional. Said professional is Jay, who's somewhat of an expert when it comes to rope, the act of rope play and shibari. Um, so the two of them spend some time together so Frankie can learn some things. But once they spend more time together, they obviously start to fall for one another. I really enjoyed this one. I loved the discussion about uh, disability and accessibility. As someone who is disabled, I adore that in any book that I read that has disability rep. Um, I thought Jay was super cute and adored how he worshipped every inch of Frankie. Um, and I also love all the funny and quirky aspects in here too. This is my first Evie Mitchell and I'm really excited to read more of her books. I do however feel like this book was too short for my liking. I felt like I wanted more after reading a few scenes in here. Like a scene would end or a chapter would end and then I'd jump to something else and I'd be like, wait, what? Like I want more. <laughs> um, so unfortunately that did happen a few times. So I ended up giving this book just a four out of five stars. Um, the tropes in here, um, there are love lessons. Uh, reluctant to love, the hero is, um, and there is, and it is a romance with disability representation, obviously. I also wanna mention that I did read The Bad Count Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn, the second book in the Bridgerton series. That'll be my Bridgerton vlog. We're moving on to the next book. <laughs> the next two books I read uh, during my end of the month flare up chronic illness episode. Um, so I ended up reading another Lila Faye book. I read Satan. Um, this one takes place like during Christmas time. Um, so I don't have a review on Goodreads in here, but I did give it a 3.5 out of five stars. This woman essentially is writing a letter to Santa, but instead of it being sent to Santa, she gets sent to Satan and she has dyslexia. And so she writes Satan instead of Santa. And so all of her Christmas letters that she's written to Santa have been actually accidentally sent to Satan. So Satan's been reading all of her Christmas letters and has kind of been like falling in love with her and lusting after her through these letters and watching her. Um, and so he gets summoned by this woman and they end up falling for each other. <laughs> this one was super quirky and fun and just like a great break from reality. And then the other novella that I read the night before my episode that I remember like not all that much about, <laughs> unfortunately, and I was not able to write a review was um, Little Green Vines by Britt Andrews. This is a sapphic monster novella. Um, so I believe like our heroine, she lives in this cottage um, all by herself on the edge of this woods. She ends up getting lured into the woods by this creature, this woman monster creature that lives in the woods because um, this monster has been watching her for a while and is very attracted to her and wants her to be her mate. Um, and she kind of like lures her into the woods and tries to seduce her. So this was super fun from what I can remember. I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. And I really recommend it if you're wanting a monster romance that's sapphic because I've never read one before this point. So I really liked it. I want to mention that I did read An Offer from a Gentleman by Julia Quinn, the third book in the Richardson series. That'll be on that vlog. We are now moving on. <laughs> the last book that I ended up reading in um, April was Kyrus by A.G. Wilde. This is the the fourth book in the Captured by Alien series. And I only have one more book to read and then I'm done with the series. Um, but I've really enjoyed these books. These are alien romances um, that you have to read in, in order. Like you cannot read them out of order. It's not like other alien romance series that are just like companion books, like these books build off of each other, even though each book is about a new couple. So this one's about Kairos and Song. Two of them travel on this desert planet to try and find civilization and they fall in love along the way. Um, Kairos is this really cool alien that I've never like read about before. In all the alien romances that I've ever read, none of them have had wings. And so Kairos has these wings. I thought it was so cool. Um, <laughs> I really like this one. It was super sweet. Kairos was super sweet. He comes from this like alien species where like the women dominate and like the women are able to pick a mate. Like they basically, the women to pick mates conquer, like like conquer the male that she wants. Um, and so Kyrus doesn't know how to act around Song because he's like, I want her, 
but I'm not supposed to initiate everything like according to my culture and my people. So I don't know what's going on. And Song the whole time is like, what's up with this guy? I really like him. Why isn't he doing anything? <laughs> you know, like they're both waiting on the other person, um, which they both act really shy around each other. And so tropes in here, it's an alien romance. There's a caretaking scene. It's on Kids Unlimited. There's a near-death experience. Um, there's also amazing period representation in here too. I made that as a new, like not like trope, but a new shelf on my Goodreads. I rarely see romance books where like we talk about periods all that much. And so like sometimes it's refreshing to read about something like that like organic, you know? Um, so there's great period rep in here. It's honestly one of my favorite scenes in this whole book because it was hilarious at times um, because like he doesn't understand what a period is and he thinks something bit her. She's trying to suck up the venom out of her. He thinks she got bit on the butt by something. And she's like, no, I didn't. And she's like so embarrassed. <laughs> and like, how do you deal with a period when you're on a desert planet and you don't have the supplies that we would need while having a period, you know? And so like, I thought that scene was so funny. It's one of my favorite uh, scenes in this entire book. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this one and I gave it a four to five stars and I only have one more book to read and then I'm done with the series and I'm so excited to complete this series soon. But anyways, there you have it. Those are all the books that I've read um, in April. <laughs> Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any purple related emoji. But yeah, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.